Did you know that you could get a massive AWS bill even if your S3 bucket is private and there are some unauthorized requests being made to your bucket? Yes, that is correct. So even if your S3 bucket is empty and someone just guesses the name of your bucket and is sending unauthorized put requests or any kind of request, you will incur charges which can ramp up your AWS builds. Today, I'll be sharing a very interesting article that I stumbled upon through Hacker News, and I think we should look at it because there are definitely some key learning points within this article. So here's the Hacker News post that was made three days ago. It says how an empty S3 bucket can make your AWS bill explode. It's a medium article. Um, and there are some really good comments. I'll make sure to link this Hacker News uh, post down. But basically, let's go over the article and read it first. And then I'll give you key points from this article. So if you want to skip over to that section of the video, I'll have timestamps. Go ahead and do that. Well, let's go through the article. So imagine you create an empty private AWS S3 bucket in a region of your preference. What your AWS bill be the next mo morning? It's a very good hook. A few weeks ago, I began working on POC of a document indexing system for my client. I created a single S3 bucket in the EU West region and uploaded some files there for testing. Two days later, I checked my AWS billing page primarily to make sure that I was doing what I was doing was well within the free tier limits. I do that too. Apparently, it wasn't. My bill was over $1,300 with the billing console showing nearly. I don't know how many S3 put requests executed within just one day. That's a lot of put requests. And you can see they shared the billing dashboard, the usage request. So it turns out more of them are from US East, one region, than the EU West, one region where the bucket is, right? So where were these requests coming from? By default, AWS doesn't log requests executed against your S3 bucket. However, such logs can be enabled, yes, using CloudTrail or S3 server access logging. So after he enabled CloudTrail logs, I immediately observed thousands of write requests originating from multiple accounts or entirely outside of AWS. But why would some third parties bombard my S3 bucket with unauthorized requests? Was it some kind of DDoS-like attack against my account, against AWS? As it turns out, one of the popular open source tools had a default configuration to store their backup files in S3. And as a placeholder for a bucket name, they used the same name that I used for my bucket. Okay. So this meant that very that every deployment of this tool with default configuration values attempted to store its backup in my S3 bucket. So it turns out this user created a bucket name which was used by an open source tool as a default configuration. So when a new user who is using this open source tool installs this open source tool, I guess, the default configuration basically pointed it to this user's S3 bu bucket just by accident. And now it, their S3 bucket is being used as backup. So all of these put requests are from this open source tool. Note, I can't disclose the name of the tool I'm referring to as that would put the impacted company at risk of data leak, sure. So a horde of misconfigured systems is attempting to store their data in my private S3 bucket. But why should I be the one paying for the mistake? Here's why. Okay, so S3 charges you for unauthorized incoming request. This was confirmed in my exchange with the AWS support. So they did talk to AWS support. And yes, S3 charges for unauthorized request, even 400s as well. So if you don't know what 400 error codes are, they are basically, if you do an API request, you get a 400 error, means that you are either unauthorized or you don't have proper authentication. That's expected behavior. So this code is from the AWS support. So if I were to open my terminal now and type AWS S3 CP local file .txt, your bucket name, I would receive an access denied error, which is correct, but you would be the one to pay for that request. And I don't even need an AWS account to do so. Another question was bugging me 
why was over half of my bill coming from the US East 1 region? As we saw in this diagram. I don't have a single bucket there. The answer to that is the S3 request without a specified region defaults to US East 1 and are redirected as needed. And the bucket's owners pays extra for the redirected request. Awesome. Okay. So, up until this point, I think this was very fascinating and I'm like, I was shocked um, that, you know, S3 buckets, even if unauthorized um, requests are made, I, as the person who has created the bucket, will be charged for this because, you know, it hope, opens this whole can of worms that if anyone could guess my S3 bucket name, they could really bring up the bill if that's their intention. So think about bad actors, right? And to to try this on my own account, I created an S3 bucket. I kept the settings default, made sure the name was like very unique. And I will be sure to delete this bucket after this video is out because I don't want anyone to spike up my AWS bill. So I built that bucket. And what I did is I also created a Python function to just bombard my S3 bucket with put requests to just see like how does this like if if what the user is saying is true and to my surprise it is i won't show you the script again i don't want people to be using this script for malicious purposes but yeah so this was very shocking to me and like i wanted to try it on my own now let's go to the security aspect of this. So we now understand why my S3 bucket was bombarded with millions of requests and why I ended up with a huge S3 bill. At that point, I had one more idea I wanted to explore. If all those misconfig... <laughs> I knew this was what was going in their mind. So what they basically did is instead of having their bucket private, they made it public. And now all of those put requests will not get an access denied because it's a public bucket, the data will be written. So I opened up my bucket for public rights and collected over 10 GB of data within less than 30 seconds. Of course, I can't disclose whose data it was, but it left me amazed at how an innocent configuration oversight could lead to dangerous data leaks. Yeah, it's a fair point. What did I learn from all of this? Lesson one, anyone who knows the name of any of your S3 buckets can ramp up your AWS bill as they like so yeah name your s3 buckets very unique and like have some random strings at the end i don't know do your due diligence uh, so that you don't run into this standard s3 put requests are priced at just per thousand requests this is very low but a single machine can easily execute thousands of such requests per second exactly that's what i did with my python uh function python file Oh, this is also a good point. So you can't protect your bucket with services like CloudFront or WAF when it's being accessed directly through the S3 API, right? So the command we saw here, if you're using this, you know, you're directly hitting the S3 bucket and not going through CloudFront or WAF. Lesson two, adding a random suffix to your bucket names can enhance security, as I said. Lesson three, when executing a lot of requests to S3, make sure to explicitly specify the AWS region. So if you are doing something with your own buckets, and maybe your bucket is in EU West or AP South, make sure you specify the region with your request so that you don't have to pay for the redirection from US East 1. So the aftermath, I reported my findings to the maintainers of the vulnerable open source tool. They quickly fixed the default configuration. Awesome. I notified the AWS security team. I suggested that they restrict the unfortunate S3 bucket name to protect their customers from unexpected charges and to protect the impacted companies from data leaks. But they were unwilling to address misconfigurations of third-party products. I reported the issue to two companies whose data I found in my bucket. They did not respond to my emails, possibly considering them as spam. AWS was kind enough to cancel my S3 bill. Awesome. However, they emphasized that this was done as an exception. Okay, cool. And I believe, oh yeah, there is an update on this article saying that they are already working on this. By they, I mean AWS. So as you can see, Jeff Barr from AWS posted, 
Thank you to everyone who brought this article to our attention. We agree that the customer should not have to pay for an authorized request as they will they did not initiate. We'll have more to share on exactly how we'll help prevent these charges shortly. Great. That, that is good. So they should definitely work on that. But if you're just here for those key points that I mentioned in the beginning, here they are. So AWS S3 charges for all requests, even unauthorized ones. So this is very surprising, I know, but you can watch the entire video by scrolling back if you want to dive into details. But any request, even if it's unauthorized, you will be billed for those requests, even if it's a private bucket, which means bucket names are vulnerabilities. So that's the second point. Anyone who knows your bucket name can drive up your costs. So make sure your bucket names are very unique. Use some kind of randomizer or you know have a random suffix at the end of your bucket because this can save you from bad actors who might want to target your bucket and you will be the one paying those extra bills for AWS. Third is the default region cost. So if your bucket is in any other region than US East 1, whenever you make any kind of request by using the S3 API, it will default to US East Region 1 and will be redirected to wherever your bucket resides in. For example, if it's in EU West 1 and you did something like S3 CP, you're copying a file over to your bucket using the command line tool, it'll go to US East 1 and then redirected to EU West 1. But you, as the owner of the bucket will be the one who will bear charges for this redirection. So make sure you specify the region within your API call. So if it's EU West 1, specify that in your command if you're using CLI or if you're using SDK or the API. The last tip is we also saw within the article that there can be hidden data leaks. So if you're using S3, for your backups or to store files, make sure whatever configuration you are using within your tools, the S3 buckets are named exactly the same as that you have in your AWS account. So make sure you're following some kind of nomenclature or naming convention, because we saw that with the within this article that the user had a private bucket, but there was an open source tool that had the default configuration where the S3 bucket matched the user's private bucket, but as soon as they turned it public, they were able to get 10 GB of data within 30 seconds from users around the world who were using this open source tool. So it's a very important question. What if your company's data is out there right now in someone else's bucket? So make sure you pay attention to your S3 buckets and avoid these hidden data leaks. But yeah, that was the video. I hope you find it helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.